Aloha, Shervin here, and welcome to the waking hour. This is our moment in time to wake the fake up from the illusions that are holding us back from living in our full power. As Alvin Toffler said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot unlearn the many lies that they have been conditioned to believe and seek out the hidden knowledge that they have been conditioned to reject. I invite you all on a journey of self-exploration where together we unlock the keys to living the best life ever. All right, all right, all right. We're here. It's uh, it's happening. Me and my brother, Pete Evans, from the land down under. Pete, it's so good to see your face. It's been a while. Uh, last time we we spoke was on your podcast, The Heal Podcast. I still get people sending me that every single day. They took the psychedelic part of it and they've turned it into like videos and artwork and all kinds of crazy stuff. It's epic. It's good to see you. How are you, brother? Mate, really good uh, to be here with you. Thanks for the invitation and uh, hello to everybody that's either watching or listening. Great to be here. How have you been? Let's just go r- right off the bat. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. I know that you were, uh, you know, taking off some of the media. What is going on in your world and how are you operating through all the madness? Yeah, really good, mate. Actually, I, I just got out of the surf this morning. It's it's pumping here on the east coast of Australia and I was surfing with a good mate and had two surfs yesterday, one the day before. So, uh, when I have time to be able to do the things that I love or when I create the time to do the things that I love, you know, and that, it's, um, it's a great life experience. And one of the things that I have realized is if we can do the things that we love as often as we can, you know, it, it, it fills us with joy, passion, contentment, fulfillment. And that is a wonderful thing selfishly to do, but it also has this, I guess, ripple effect out there and part of the pun about the waves. But, it, you know, this morning I was out there with, it was probably 50 or 60 people out there, but everybody's happy. You know, everybody's happy and smiling. And it was, it was big today. It was good. So the heart rate's going, the adrenaline's up and you don't, you don't know what's about to happen. So, so to answer your question, how am I? I'm, awesome uh, for asking <laughs> because I get to participate in the things that I love to do and surfing is just one of them. Uh, living with my wife is another. Cooking and eating is another. Uh, being a father is another. Uh, turning concepts and ideas into reality as often as I can that I feel that fulfill me and Uh, create a ripple effect out there in the community is another. So when you focus your energies, and it doesn't even need to be focused because once you start doing this and it becomes your lifestyle, then it just flows. But on the other side of that, what you're asking me is uh, over the last year or so, or more, probably the last decade, I have been in the the media's eye, so to speak, because I, I, for anybody that doesn't, uh, who has never heard of me, I've spent a good two decades in the system, in the matrix of the mainstream media as a celebrity chef in many different guises as the traditional uh, cut and cook or chop and cook chef that talks to the camera and teaches people how to cook. Uh, I've also worn the hat of a celebrity judge on a high ranking or the number one ranking TV show in Australia for 10 years where I wore a suit and uh, was a serious judge on a a free-to-air commercial primetime television show. But at the same time, I've also, like yourself, spoken out about long-term sustainable health um, and the tools that we can use whether it be diet, whether it be our belief systems, whether it be our lifestyle choices. And because I was a chef for so many years, my focus was food. And during that period, as my profile was building in the mainstream world, and I was gaining knowledge about how whole foods uh, impact us from a dietary and lifestyle point of view, instead of just a delicious (laughs) point of view, uh, that's when some of the I guess, negative side of media started to uh, 
focus its attention on me. And over the last decade, I've had um, a great education and a great indoctrination into what that means to be a target from the mainstream media or the mainstream matrix. And over the last decade, I've, I've enjoyed that process of being able to navigate through that. And just in the last 12 months, when the coronavirus entered our vernacular, our vocabulary and dialogue, uh, my last decade of being in that space has given me the, another opportunity, more freedom to be able to speak freely about that. And in the process, uh, those mainstream platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, Spotify have, and mainstream television have done what they do best, and that is to ridicule, cancel, um, create fake stories and fake news about people that they wish to silence. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. And, again, I have more freedom now than I ever have, so I'm, I'm in a really good space. That's a long, long-winded long answer. But, no, that uh, was a perfect we answer. We got there. Yeah, that was, that was perfect and beautiful, and I reflect that directly to you. I mean, I was asked that earlier today on another podcast, you know, how do I spend my day? What's my happiness? What's my true, you know, true north? And it's, you know, connecting to the earth, connecting to the ocean, connecting to the water, connecting to the things that I love to do, growing food, going on walks, you know, working out. These are things that, you know, it's interesting because you said that might be deemed selfish, but it's interesting because in order for you to be in full power, full operational power, you need to be doing the things that you love to do. And with that, it gives you the energy and it gives you the health and vitality to be able to do other things that could directly affect other people. And I appreciate you. I, I appreciate what you're doing and standing in your power. I have a lot of respect for that. You know, there's a, there's a lot of, um, it, it, it's easy to go with the mainstream flow. It's really easy to take the easy way out. You're not doing it for other reasons outside of just wanting to speak on the truth that's embodied in you. And we both share that that coding. And so I just want to say I honor that and I appreciate what you've been doing. Thank you, brother. And in saying that, it's it's funny because it's not really a, I don't want to say it's not a conscious decision, but there is no other decision, so to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just part of, part of the journey, so to speak. And for some reason, um, I'm one of those people. You know, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. I've a look at hmm, why me? You know, I'm a pretty much a, a a shy sort of hermit living person. You know, I I, I like the simple things in life, but it, it's funny. Even, and I, I guess this might put it into context. Some of my favorite comedians over the years that can hold an audience and, and have them in rapture. I, uh, I remember seeing Robin Williams live many years ago. And underneath all of that, we understand that there were certain issues that he faced. He was shy. He was a little bit insecure, a lot insecure. He had his own thing. So it's fascinating how individuals can become and present themselves and do things that that sort of go against who they are, but not who they are. It, it, I, yeah. I'm probably not explaining this well, but I, I find it fascinating that I'm one of those people like yourself that are speaking this because it's like, yeah, I never thought that would be me. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, are you? Are you? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm just feel like it's the right thing to be doing at this particular point in time. Maybe in a year's time, it won't be me. Right. And, you know, I'll, I'll focus my energies onto something else. But, um, yeah, it's a, it, it's a, my wife and I always say every day, what a trip this experience is it's being here on Earth. It's such a trip. What a, what a trip. trip. Yeah. I, I was in the surf this morning, actually, and I was surfing with a great guy that's uh, another outspoken person. And we've just connected in the flesh over the last few days and we've been surfing together the last few days. And we're out there and we were, we're in the northern part of New South Wales on the east coast of Australia. And we're just below the Gold Coast. And if there are any surfers out there, we're just below Kira or Snapper Rocks, probably 20 minute drive. And we watched this jet or this plane fly. No, no flight path, 
that you would you could ever try to work out what the flight path is. You know, there's no destination of where this plane potentially could be going. And it just starts spraying just as it's coming to hit the land on the Gold Coast, basically straight over the Gold Coast. And it sprayed for probably, what I'd say, two or three miles and then stopped. And we're both, we're both having this conversation. He's like, you see that? I'm like, uh-huh. He goes, the amount of surfers that I speak to that have no idea, they, they don't even look up to see what that is. And it's happening a lot here in Australia at the moment. And you point it out to people, they're like, I've never seen that before. So it's been going on every day for the last however many years and it's, and it's building up. And I guess why I'm bringing this to, to the attention in this conversation is what are we focusing on? What can we see? What, what, what awareness can we bring to the environment in which we co-create? And that's the really interesting one because I still don't know the answer of what's going on up there. There's so many different narratives that you might want to take us on, on a journey into that. But uh, I know I've spoken to you to Avocado about this. <laughs> I, I've been well, we've been researching this since I was a kid. You know, we were aware of uh, it's called geoengineering, and that's what they call it. And it's actually now becoming mainstream because it's just been so obvious that they've been polluting the skies in front of us. This is not a conspiracy theory. And they have an explanation, and their explanation is that they're going to be spraying strontium and aluminum to reflect the UVA and UVB rays of the sun to bounce back towards outer space to lower global warming. Now, that's, that's the narrative. So anyone listening to this... I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to know that anytime you're spraying metal particulates in the atmosphere, it's dangerous, not good, not good for the health of our topsoil, not good for the health of the plants, not good for the health of the people. It's just one of those erroneous things. And what's interesting, like you said, is that 95% of the people, they don't even look up. And even surfers that are connected to their soul that are in, you know, in the water, in that kinetic energy, connecting to the sun, the moon, the stars, all that stuff, they're still not looking up to see what that is or to even question what that is. That's the disconnect. That's the great divide. And that's where we have to snap out of if we want to have a chance. you know. And I, I'm curious, how did you get to where you are today? You know, Because you interviewed me last time we spoke on your podcast which I still go back and listen to all the time. It was just, I, 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 you know, I've been interviewed a hundred times. That's still my favorite one. I, you'd really led me pro properly on that one. So, <laughs> so I, I don't even look at this as an interview. I, this is just two mates having a conversation. And that's really what Wake the Fake Up is. And I'm curious, you went from celebrity chef to all of a sudden, like questioning the mainstream narrative. Was there an incident that happened or was it just a combination of clues and starting to see that hey wait a second this is this is erroneous this is bullshit you know we need to take take our power back and not give it away from something outside of us yeah i mean it's i've, I've mentioned this before on different interviews that i've done and it's you know a combination it's it's a lifetime of choices basically uh that has led us to this moment once again and thank you for the kind words i loved uh having that chat with you and holding space for you to be you <laughs> in all yeah. your beauty and wonder. Absolutely. And the, the, I mean, we could, we could dissect every single part of, you know, my, my birth through to parents divorce through to my schooling through to career choices through to yeah. everything. And when I was on Paul check, having a chat, who I know is a good mate of yours as well, a good brother of yours. Uh, we talked about facing fear as one of the fundamental things that I enjoy doing uh, to a degree. It's even like today in the surf, you know, there was, there was some big ones out there. And I get super excited, like, as soon as I see them coming, and I, I'm like, we're all going to get rolled by these freak sets today <laughs> yeah yeah i know that i, I know start. that feeling in your stomach when, <laughs> when you can see it starting to crank and it's uh, there's a, you know there's a set of them coming it's like in your, your gut you can feel but it i just start cool. laughing i'm like oh <laughs> this is awesome yeah. like, this is awesome we're we're all about to cop it. like even <laughs> if it was just me and everybody had made it through i'd still be laughing you know? oh. <laughs> and because there's something about surrendering into the moment and there's no one to blame. 
you know, like today, I chose to be out there. I chose to be in waves that they, they weren't that challenging, but there were some there were some rogue sets. I was like, you're going to have to hold your breath here and, and surrender, and who knows what's going to happen underwater. Um, so I've I've enjoyed over the years confronting certain fears that I've had, it's the ocean being one of them, sharks being another one, uh, psychedelics being a major one for me, going into ceremonial uh, work and uh, as someone that does live in his brain and his ego and mind quite a lot, you know, just stepping up for that next bowl of medicine or toke of 5-MeO, so... Eh, fuck you, you're putting yourself <laughs> into a space that you know you don't want to be in, but you know it's good for you. Uh, so surrender into it. And it, it, I, I do think it does take courage to, to face your fears. And, and what it does at the same time is it brings a great sense of humility into it all and a great sense of humour at the same time <laughs> because even in a psychedelic experience or a shamanic journey, it's like, you may not be the same person ever again. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. And you may not, you might get into a point in that journey where you might think, oh, fuck, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> And all you can do at that at that same time is sort of laugh about it. Same yeah. thing. Or and, cry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Puke. And and it's interesting because I'm about to I've been asked to step into a political party for the next federal election here in Australia, which is probably in about twelve months' time. And you know, one of the the over the years I've thought what would be the worst job in the world? Politics, being a politician, right? The, the, the one job that I just would not want to do, having to go and meet these type of people and spend time with them and interact and face-to-face -face with people that you know that it, it, you might be hard-pressed to find commonality and have a deep and meaningful discussion. And that's just my projection and my judgment before I've met these people. So I could be completely off base here, and, and hopefully I am. But when, when uh, this leader of a political party in Australia said, hey, we'd love for you to run as a senator, I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, of course, uh, of course, of course I'm, yeah. I'm being invited into a space and once again that – I probably would prefer never to have anything to do with it. But when the invitation came, I was like, okay, well, there's fear in that. And what is that fear? And it, 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 some of it is to do with being in around people that I have a preconceived judgment about. I have fear that perhaps nothing can change from even going into that. So is it a waste of my time? Is it a waste of my energy? Is it a waste? Is it a sacrifice to take myself away from my th things that I love to do, to do something that I don't really want to do? So all of these, the ego mind and the monkey mind is going through all the reasons why it's just a dumb decision. <laughs> oh, and then there's parts of the ego like, well, what are you doing it for? Why would you even entertain it? What have you got to gain from this? You know, so we go around in circles and, and finally after a few days of contemplation and some random coincidental events that happened since the invitation that cemented my decision to move forward in the direction that I was invited, it feels right. And I've removed all expectations of what this journey may or may not be. It might be a short-lived journey. It could be a very long-lived journey. I could create a ripple effect that I can't even perceive yet just by stepping one foot in front of the other on this path of standing up and entering a political system that I know is corrupt and many others know is corrupt. What would that, what could what are the endless or infinite possibilities that can come from this, not only personally, but 
uh, in the community. And part of the thing that I've been thinking about recently is who am I going to meet in that realm that is already in the system? Because I have to have the belief that there are good people in there. It's like when people paint a brush against mainstream doctors, you know, it's like, no, 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 there, there's some really good ones in there. Some have just lost their way. And I have to have the same belief about the political system, that there are good people in there and everybody has goodness in them. And I'm fascinated about who I'm going to meet and what may come, not only for myself, but for them. And so I'm, I'm fascinated by this journey. I'm curious about it, equally as fascinated and, and uh, I don't have any fear about it anymore because it feels congruent. And when it doesn't feel congruent, then I'll, I'll step into a different direction or maybe jump into a different direction. So, so that's a long-winded answer. Oh, I, I just, find this. Oh, 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 what do you got here? What do you got here? Just, I don't know whether you can see that, but there's one flying. Is it a hawk? That's who I'm mentioning. No, no, no. Uh, the, the one of those planes. Oh. Dropping it. <laughs> They're listening dropping to it's, this conversation for sure. <laughs> dropping its, uh, its, its joy bundle. If you can't right. see this because you're listening to it on you know, Apple or Spotify or whatever. Pete was so kind that he navigated the camera to, um, you know, some plane that's dropping X, Y, Z into the atmosphere. We don't and know. again, not on, not on a normal flight path. Yeah, of course not. For, for a, for a commercial. Yeah. For, for a commercial. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny that since the shutdowns and lockdowns here, there's more flight activity in the sky. Than yeah. ever before. Interesting. <laughs> makes of makes a lot of sense. Of planes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So to answer your question, um, it's been a lifelong journey of discovery, of curiosity, of fascination, and and stepping into places that <clears throat> can feel a little bit icky, a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit uh, uh, scary. And but that's what keeps me alive. Entertained. It, well, it, it keeps, keeps me alive. entertained yeah. as well about how I reacted in these situations and how it affects other people around me too. I find that fascinating. Yes. So, you know, I, I like to be aware and conscious of, of the, of what my decisions mean for other people, which is interesting. Uh, awareness to be in. <laughs> I find it really interesting. People are fascinated about what I choose to do, which I find fascinating because I don't really find what other people choose to do <laughs> that neither do i i'm with you on that i i like your general disposition you're just kind of like a laughing monk right now and you're just like you know whatever flows and i'm feel i feel into it and i like to go into the edge of the void and feel oh this you know this feels right or this feels wrong and entertaining possibilities without putting too much worth on it and I, I, that's an ease and grace, you know, way of traveling through this trip that we call life. And I think, you know, you've gone through X, Y, Z in your life. We all have trauma. We all have experiences. We all have high, highs and lows and all those things. So it's fascinating to feel your unique vibration on something that would be so ridiculous in terms of what people would assume you would do in this, you know, going into politics, politics, whatever we want to call it. So that's, that's but, fascinating. But even, even the notion that there has to be political parties and that I we mean, have to have for sure. a government, a government. I mean, that's what it, 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 it baffles my mind yeah. how these, how these systems have been created and have lasted for as long as they have and have grown to be the size that they are and for people, the population, the public, the masses to give away their power to these entities or these uh, egregores or systems Yes, uh, without questioning. And, you know, uh, Kelly Brogan, who, who I know you know is, is wonderful and as she calls them, you know, um, mummy and father, I mean, daddy, basically, big government and big pharma. 
you know, totally that that so many people because they haven't dealt with their trauma or issues about being an individual sovereign human being are still wanting mummy and daddy to look after them, yeah. whether it be the government or whether it be the medical system or educational system or whatever, you know, fill in the blank with something to look after them because they are not whole and embodied and empowered to be their sovereign being. And I'm not saying that government is bad because obviously there has to be some sort of structure in place for a community to get things done. And I'm, I'm, I'm so interested to see the evolution that's going to happen or the de-evolution de of what has happened, yeah. devolution of, of where it's going to go in our lifetime. And that's, that's, that's so fascinating too. Like which storyline or storylines are going to develop from this point forward? Because there are so many narratives that can coexist, that can dominate, that we could step out of and create our own. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm so the last 12 months, it's, it's really been the greatest show on earth, as some people would say, if we choose to either watch what is happening or observe what is happening or participate in the great show. And, or we decide to opt out completely, which some people that I know have and, you know, what's the right path? And I use that word right very loosely because each and every one of us can definitely, as you said, manifest our reality. And every day I wake up going, this is getting stranger by the day, like those planes, for instance. Yeah. It's becoming stranger by the day. It honestly feels like we're in a virtual reality or virtual system that is just getting wackier by the day. <laughs> like, how, how fortunate are we to experience this? If it, we it's extraordinary. It, <laughs> me, and, me and Avocado have been talking about this for a while now, and all the things that have come to fruition, have, have, you know, the Orwellian prophecy, it's here. You know, whether, whether it comes to big data companies, when it comes to government, govern the mind, control the mind, when it comes to big ag and big pharma and all of these corporatocracies that have lent themselves the power of government, right? So that's really what you're talking about. That's where things went wrong. We do need to have a nucleus that creates a structure. So there's a way of life, where a way that people can thrive and live in syntropy right? And that energy has been removed to a commodity and to a brokerage of, you know, putting people into a position where they are stripped of their sovereignty and their power and they have to rely, right? And so that's, you know, that, that is a, that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. That's a strategy. That's a problem reaction solution. You know, it could be a terrorist attack, biological warfare. It could be an and, economic and, collapse, all of those things. Yeah. And to, and to think it can be changed like that yeah. is probably wishful thinking too. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's generational, right? What, Wouldn't you agree? It yeah. starts with the children. You know, we've lo kind of lost our generations. It's now we have to re-propagate the educational system with children and focus on building them as opposed to indoctrinating them. You know, because exactly. that's really what well, it is. It's interesting because for years we were we gave dietary uh, programs out there, and we in Australia we had a hundred thousand people adopt our uh, dietary philosophy. Um, through an online program that we did. And it was fascinating because people wanted a quick fix. You know, they're like, well, I've done four weeks or 10 weeks of your program and I've, I haven't lost the weight or I haven't uh, reversed my autoimmune disease or put it in remission or reversed my type 2 diabetes or fill in the blanks again. And I'd simply write back, I say, how many decades did it take for you to develop that disease or illness? or how many years, or how many months? I said, and you want to reverse something in two, four, six, eight, ten 10 weeks? As it, and, and it's the same thing like you just mentioned then when we're looking at 
the reality in which we exist in, in on this planet is how many thousands of years, as you just said, did it take to get us here? And yeah. somebody clicking their fingers, fixing it or changing it. I don't think it's going to happen that no, way. No. Because- <laughs> I, I love what you're, you're saying. It's the instant gratification re- reality we're in, right? Because so... T- we want we want the solution right there, but we don't want to do the work, and we don't want to learn about it. We want to take the pill, you know. We want to get yeah. the, the the cut, but we don't want to understand how epigenetics works. We don't want to understand how the soil works. We don't want to get into the microbiome. We might want to just take the key headwords and say, "Oh, inflammation" or blah 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 blah. But we don't want to get down to the root cause in everything. And so you're, I, I believe people are devoiding themselves the ability to actually create change. And that's, a, um, that's, that's fragmented from the way we teach our children. That's just really my opinion. The way kids are raised around families and schooling systems, they're not given the, the incubator to grow and, and become you know, someone that has the faculties to build and to do the work, right? It's almost like we've lost that. And that's that's really huge. Well, we've seen it in, especially in America, for the people out there that um, that have supported and followed Trump, for instance, or the Q movement, mm-hmm. and and a lot of people that are disgruntled that have been a supporter of Trump or Q or whatever it may be, the White Hats over the last twelve to eighteen months, and they're expecting arrests of the. Illuminati or the cabal or the elites and uh, you are still demonstrating the same issues of the mummy and daddy government or medical system but you've just filled in the blank with a a conspiratorial uh, military operation or a political figure such as Trump or the Republicans or whoever it may be or on the other side Biden to fix (laughs) the the inequalities or whatever it or the unity of uh, disconnection of the American population. And again, it's, it's feeding into the same thing. And I've had people on me say, you are a Trump supporter. You know, how do you feel now that nothing's happened? I said, well, I think a lot has happened. But again, I never relied on, I never thought that Trump was the one that was going to save anybody. I just find him a fascinating figure that has stepped out of the narrative, so to speak, of the political narrative and has been a catalyst for some turbulence and what's going to come from that turbulence. I always saw him as a catalyst for change. Now, does that mean he's the actual person that's going to change things into a different system? Possibly. But what if he's just the ripple effect and the next president after Biden or whoever or whoever comes through that? is a catalyst uh, or a group of people is another catalyst, so to speak, or, or comes through that. So I find it fascinating because there's a lot of people that follow me that on my one social media page, which is Telegram now after, after being kicked off Facebook and Instagram, <laughs> that anytime I still put something to do with Trump up, they're like, oh, he hasn't come through. I'm like, well, you're still missing it. It's about you coming through. What are you doing? Are you going to step into the political realm? Are you going to start a community? Are you going to stand up for your rights? Are you going to create a campaign to stop people wearing masks? Are you going to, what are you doing? So it's a it's a really fascinating time over the last 12 months because I think, well, I believe this is where we're heading. Where we're heading as individuals is for each and every one of us to realize that no one is coming to save us. Next part of that is we actually don't need saving. That's 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 the paradox in it. That's, I mean, that's and the illusion, three, right? That's yeah. the illusion. That's I mean, that's that's the religious dogma as well. So religious dogma has entered the scientific community where science has become the newfound religion, and religious dogma has entered the political arena, which mm-hmm. is all the social equity and social engineering. It's the same dogma circulating through all the different avenues of life. I love what you're saying right now. And, and this is, you know, th- this is where this is the paradox. How do we shake off 
you know, 20, 30 years of trauma and insecurity and giving our power away for free and pointing blame and becoming a victim and operating with scarcity mentality and poverty conscious and all these things that really create divide and conquer where where we have to blame someone if it's not trump it's biden if it's biden it's not trump if it's this it's the liberal party if it's this it's you know it's tech people in texas if it's not people in texas it's the people in australia if it's this 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 it's vaxxers anti-vaxxers blah 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 i'm, I'm with you i i i m- me it's operating with full truth but I don't want to create polarization anymore. It does no good. We're, we're, what are we doing here? We got we to gotta figure out a way where we can communicate and we don't destroy the, the people we're trying to help, right? And, and that's, that's another, another twist. Are, are you, do you find yourself ever getting upset or angry and frustrated or are you more aligned with the cosmic giggle and knowing that's just people, part of their karma, it's part of their path? Because I've surrendered that. Me and David, that's a part of our conversation now because he's been fighting this for 30 years to, to his own fault. You know, It's caused a lot of problems for him, and, but that's part of his karma. I'm more like, you know what? I'm just, do, do whatever you do. I'm going to keep doing what I do, but I'm not here to convince anyone anymore. I'm just, this might be my brand of bullshit. If you like it, Practice discernment and and look further. You with me on that? Where we're we're not giving our soul to, away, and which is causing stress and causing disease and causing a breakdown emotionally, mentally, physically. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I there's some amazing things happening in the in the world at the moment, which I'm I, I again fascinated about and curious about to see where it happens. And and I I I see new things emerging all the time, and through necessity. You know, I, I look at the world of cryptocurrency. You know, I had no idea about it until six months ago. And now I see it and I've done many interviews with people because I'm fascinated by it because I see that as, as potentially a, a way of people coming together again for their self-sovereignty in one way, shape or another. And I can see the potential pitfalls for this. I could see the potential... Um, maybe corruption in that space and but i'm also seeing a shift like i haven't seen before where people are actually educating themselves about a system like which is called the the fiat currency system yeah and once you see that for what it is and are educated and informed of it you will never unsee that ever again it's the same thing with dietary guidelines for instance and going back to your early question what was one of the catalysts to speak out and the dietary guidelines was probably the the first thing that I saw where corruption existed on a scale that is really hurting people. It's killing people. Misinformation that is a conflict of interest between big agriculture, multinational food corporations, big, um, <laughs> big government, they're all involved in this, you could say, and, and big medicine that they are caught in such a web of deceit and lies that once you see it, you'll never unsee it. So I'm witnessing this with cryptocurrency, witnessing this with the health movement over the last 10 years to to 20 years in exposing this, seeing what's happening now, especially in the last year with government, uh, you know, the Bill Gates, I don't think he could walk down the street and feel very safe. I don't think many people um, could walk down the the street and feel safe anymore. I don't think people's trust in pharmaceuticals and especially vaccines. And and I've, I've loved this over the last 12 months since the vaccine dialogue became something we could actually speak about. Now, Mainstream media is talking about adverse reactions. I mean, Tucker Carlson last night, I don't know whether you saw his or might have been tonight for you. um, He did an amazing uh, segment about vaccine safety in relation to the coronavirus vaccine. And what we're witnessing now is mainstream media is starting to talk about the adverse reactions that happens in other vaccines in which 
people like David or Avocado and others have been chastised over and, and you know, to the point of, you know, serious, serious threats on, on their lives and livelihoods over the years for saying exactly the same thing that we're witnessing mainstream media now doing over the last six to 12 months, but really in the last month, they're really opening the door to share the information that was hidden, suppressed, denied over the last decade, two decades, three decades. Now it's like it's been drip, drip, drip. Now the flood is opening for everybody to see the deception and, again, the corruption that the pharmaceutical companies and the government have done. So the question that not one journalist still is asking is, why is the government doing deals with criminal organisations that have paid out for false, misleading and outright deceptive information that has killed and injured human beings? When is that going to happen? And I've said it time and over the last 12 months and I've met many journalists, I said, this is a career-defining moment for somebody as an investigative journalist with the courage to change the narrative. And it will happen, I, I guarantee it. And, and I, I it's love happening. watching James, I mean, it, James O'Keefe from Project Veritas yeah, and, yeah. and Tucker Carlson. You know, whatever you think of Fox News being a Murdoch um, thing, it was interesting. I, I bumped into Lachlan Murdoch in Sydney the other day. Oh, interesting. Like, G'day, g'day, mate. Um, I like what you're doing to me <laughs> for the years because they've been one of the, one of the biggest uh, attackers, so to speak, but it's their business. Yeah. You know? um, but you just smile and keep walking. But um, yeah, so, so I've, again, I'm finding this last year really fascinating because all the things that we thought potentially would never happen are happening and they're happening really rapidly. And my analogy of this is, we can nearly sit back to a point because I feel like we're nearly at the point where they're going to destroy themselves. But, yeah, they're and right they're, there. They're, they're taking themselves to the edge. This is it. That's why they're doing such desperate, desperate moves. It's fascinating. How, and, yeah, and, yeah, Hail and, they're, and they're throwing each, under, each other under the bus. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh -huh. it's nearly like it, it is happening. And if you've got the eyes and the, and to, to, to see this and the ears to listen and, and to feel what is actually happening, the systems are starting to, or they have been crumbling and they're not held up much longer with any great foundation. And that is big medicine, government, education, and the list goes on, mainstream media, social media, all of these things that we thought we couldn't do without are all being exposed and they're crumbling some quicker than others. Yep. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I think the social media and the mainstream media are, are really crumbling at the moment. They're all, it's all happening. So again, what a trip to be here. Hallelujah. On the Hallelujah. Witnessing this and potentially participating in it. If that's your path. Yeah. If it's your it's path and if it's not, and you got to, you're just going to go and, live on your farm and uh, grow your veggies and opt out and kudos to you. Absolutely. And, and I'll finish with this the other, because I, I interviewed a great fellow the other day called Aaron Alexander, and he gave me a different perspective on things. And I, I really loved what he said. He talked about how we probably all have members in our family and community and friends that are fully indoctrinated into the system, into the matrix that, have already had their vaccine shots, follow the dietary guidelines or see a, see a mainstream doctor and a dietitian to help them with their autoimmune disease or cancer or whatever it may be, and watch the mainstream news every night religiously. And he said, Pete, if you can celebrate their life and their journey as being the total badass gangster human being, that when they were spirit and they decided to come down into a human uh, life force and experience this world, they chose to forget everything 
They said, I'm going to be that person that forgets everything. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to understand how to meditate. I don't want to understand how to have joy in this life. I'm just going to go out there and be the biggest gangster human being that just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> he goes on that journey. He goes, if you can celebrate them as much as the, the, the activist or the person that is the Buddhist monk, if you can celebrate them equally and evenly, then you will find peace. And that frustration may not creep in or that anger or resentment or the, the what the fuck are you doing type thing. I am and, with that. And so it's helped, much. it helped me a lot. Yeah. Actually, that, that, that one piece of advice or that one observation, because we have got those people. And for me, when I see those people, I'm grateful for them because they show me a path that I'm glad that I'm not on, but I can still respect that that's their path because they still potentially may be living in fear of their own light and their own power and their own sovereignty and to judge them without condemning them and just accepting them for who they are and with compassion. You know, that's, that's, that's a, it's a path that I, I choose now to, to walk. I love it, brother. I mean, meeting people where they are and recognizing that that's the ultimate freedom. That's the ultimate mastery. That is the God mode. I had Aaron on a couple of weeks ago and we got into some, some deep, you know, provocative thoughts and, I had some emotional cathartic moments during that conversation as I am right now. And I find it super beautiful that you're able to go into that place after being in that fire for so long and still continuing to be, do what you do and, and fighting the oppression. But that really is the, the ultimate uh, up leveling is to just meet people where they're at and see them as their ch inner child. I think where it gets convoluted and where it affects me is seeing children not having a choice. And that right there is something that, you know, something needs to, something needs to happen for that because that's, that's how we're going to have a chance of dismantling these these systems even more and being able to use the disruption platforms that are occurring right now, as you mentioned, you know, as far as cryptocurrency and all other disruptions, you know, decentralizing a mainframe network and letting us just live as people is ultimately where we're, where we're going not where we have to go. It's it's happening right now, and so I honor that, and I I honor your perspective. I'm I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks, brother. Yeah, that's a lot of work. So <laughs> it's a lot of play too. It's for sure. So I got to come check you out in Australia. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get over there. I, every year I'm supposed to be there for the Australian Open with Novak. And then because of chaos or whatever, I'm not able to come. And the last two years, I obviously haven't been able to come because of what's been going on. Uh, but he keeps he keeps winning down there. So we're definitely trying to slate come into the next one. And uh, we might have to take a boat. <laughs> or, I might have, or I might have to swim from Kauai. <laughs> yeah, just jump on one of those long long paddle boards. You'll be yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we'd love to have you. We just opened a, a beautiful health retreat, a wellness retreat uh, on 20 acres of rainforest. I'll send you some photos. Please do. Yeah, it'd be right up your alley. We've got a beautiful fire pit. We've got an ice bath and sauna and float tank. And, uh, and yeah, some, there's some, we have some beautiful people that come and visit us and Add a, add a little bit of their magic to to uh, the experience for the guests that um, we invite to come along. And, yeah, it's, it's a pretty special space. And, and if anybody is interested, we've uh, launched a TV platform called Evolve Network.tv as well. So Evolve Network.tv. And we have quite a lot of documentaries on there and TV programs that aren't mainstream as well as uh, heaps of recipes and meal plans and, and a lot of stuff. So if you're interested in uh, supporting us, that would be great. The more people that we get, the, uh, the bigger the platform can become and the more content we can create and purchase and um, have a safe uncensored space for 
like-minded individuals and also for individuals that aren't like-minded they can come and have a sticky beak too to see what's going on in the, <laughs> the 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 wacky world of the the alternative amazing what you're doing out there yeah please send me photos and uh anyone that i know that's in your region definitely has to come visit you guys you know we know we have a large australian office uh audience on the podcast also with symbiotica you know we have so many people in australia that are just thirsty for you know good stuff and um you know being aligned with you brother it feels right and it is right and it's our destiny to be doing these things together and hopefully i see you down over there or maybe i see you in venice again uh, we'll see how that goes, <laughs> but I'd rather go over there. Anything's possible, my friend, and uh, anything's possible. Yeah. Who knows what next week will bring us? Exactly. You never know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pete, for your time. I really, uh, I look forward to our next conversation. We'll talk offline, and it's, uh, it's just beautiful, man. I, I feel your peace and. You know, over the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, I bid you nothing but ultimate blessings on your journey, and uh, I'll be following. You know, and I'm just sending you and your your misses a bunch of love, and I look forward to staring into your eyes and being in ceremony with you and really connecting on on purpose, life, and what the hell we're doing on this uh, plane of existence. <laughs> uh, love you, brother. Too. Thanks for inviting me love to everybody that's uh, been listening or watching too and uh thank you for your time I, I love the name of your show wake the fake up and um we need to wake the truth up too yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> how we you. do it love you too all right guys hope you enjoyed this big love gratitude family for tuning in today and deep reverence to you all for dedicating your time to seeking knowledge and truth this is what it's all about you can find more of my podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Google Podcasts. You can also find this on my website at wakethefakeup.com. Life is all about momentum. Please leave a review so I can hear your experiences and share with your friends, family, and anyone who needs to hear this message. This is a revolution of consciousness. This is just the beginning. I am all in. I'll be back next week for another epic conversation. Stay tuned, family. Big love.